Oh. Uh, having to relive that again, it just sucks. What is up, fan fans? Episode four. Can't really see it. Took a ton of notes. In the books. Um it sucked. It was it it started so good, the episode, and I'm gonna go through it, break it down bit by bit, all the notes I took, but having to relive the end of that game again, having to relive Bradley Chubb throwing his helmet to which just killed um the mistakes, the injuries, all that stuff, it just sucked. Um, and on top of that, not only did I watch the game and had to live through it, but I had to watch, you know, I watched Hard Knocks, I had to relive through it. And then after I release this video, I'm going to record my film breakdown, which means I'm probably going to watch this game another three times to break down the film. So altogether, I've watched the game probably five times and it sucks. But let's jump into it. Starts with Raheem Mosert and his kids enjoying their day off at the beach because they played on uh, Monday. So they got the nice Sunday off. Um, and then Mike McDaniel and his daughter. And his daughter is the cutest little girl besides my daughter. Just her talking to the camera and telling them to stay there. And it was just super cute. Uh, then they cut to the um, quarterback room where Tua had a secret word from Scarlett, uh, Scarlett, Skylar Thompson and Mike White, Tropic Thunder. He incorporated it into his Monday night uh, thing last week, which I thought was really funny. And then McDaniel tells Tua, which I found very interesting, you are at your best when you don't know where you're going to throw it pre-snap. I don't know if he was being sarcastic with him or not, but I found that to be very interesting that he said that you're at your very best when you don't know where you're going to throw it. And then the first half of practice was bad. Tua looked off. Tua was making bad throws. Tua was mad at himself. He threw an inter like he was bad. And then he bounced back in the second half of practice. But it's like, and again, I haven't looked at the film yet. I'm going to do it right after this. Is Was that like, you have a bad practice. Sometimes you have a bad game. You have good practice. You have a good game. Was that a little bit of an omen of what we were going to see? Because, again, I'll look at the film, but he was off in practice. He did bounce back. Um, and then Mike McDaniel said to them, we will get what we deserve. We are entitled to nothing. Now, I will say this. From watching this video, and it could have been cut differently and all that stuff, they did seemed like they were, you know, they talked about being the number one in the AFC, the number one seed, you know, three games up in the AFC East. They seemed like they were feeling themselves a little bit. And the fact that Bradley Chubb and the presser afterwards said we kind of needed that. I, I hope, I hope you get a slap in the face and realize that it's do or die now. You still control your destiny. And how many times have I said that about this team? And then they fell on their face. But hopefully what you just dealt with, being up 14 points and losing, giving up 15 in four and a half minutes on offense and defense, because there was multiple, and we're going to break down film. That'll be out tomorrow. There's multiple opportunities to get first downs. I hope that's a slap in the face. And you come out and you play hard, fiery, everything. And I hope the Jets and the Cowboys and the Ravens get your wrath and you beat these three teams. But uh, we'll see. Uh, and then they t they talked about Alec Ingold, which was awesome. Tyreek Hill says, I'm not an MVP. We got a guy on here who's more important to the team than I am. Not necessarily true. Uh, and he talks about Alec Ingold and how important Alec Ingold is to the team. And then Alec Ingold sat down and he saw him being nominated for Man of the Year, Miami Dolphins nomination his wife and all these people he find out he was adopted and all that stuff it was a really good story with alec ingold i really when we signed him i was very happy i you know i think it was last off season i said uh under appreciated or like one of those signings that's going to go under the radar was alec ingold and i i love the way he's playing um then they then they had a nice little sequence 
showing how the sod for the field is made and how we have our own farm that we grow it. And then it takes like, I think they said four 18 wheelers to bring the sod to the stadium. And we met Tom, who's the landskeeper and Tua met with them. And, and I thought it was so cool that they showed how it's how it's done and how our grass is made grass is grown and then the turf is brought in and uh i thought that was so cool and then tula like went back to the quarterback room i think it was the next day and kind of told skylar thompson and mike white how how many people it takes to run not only the front office but the ticket sales the cashiers the people selling you your waters and your food and your drink the people cleaning up the turf the ball boys all there's a lot of people and he was like so many of them never meet us players and i think it's cool that he got to see that and got to experience that so um i thought that was really cool um then they were talking about the titans they called them bullies uh wes walker knows mike grable so he kind of talked about the player he was and and how they play and all that stuff. Um, and then McDaniel on another practice told Duke Riley, who kind of took over for Jerome Baker being Jerome Baker's injured. Um, you kind of, you know, when the offense looks off, I like to tell them, I'll go to two and I'll kind of tell them and then they pick it up and blah, blah, blah. And he says to Duke, he goes, defense looks a little sluggish. They, they don't seem like they have a sense of urgency. And then Duke try, you know, brought him back up and had him do their thing. Um, and it made me realize kind of what happened with the that that four and a half minutes and kind of how the defense was doing well. But then towards the end of the game, it kind of started faltering off. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins was open on a lot, of, a lot of plays and all that stuff. And not having Javon Holland, who's a play caller and a signal caller for the defense, and Jerome Baker, it seemed you, we saw how much it hurt. So, you know, hopefully Javon is back for the Jets game, but... You kind of see it's not a knock on Duke Riley because I think he played well, but you have these two guys who you know are your backbone of the defense, and they weren't in there, and kind of showed in those last four and a half minutes. Um, I'm just reading what I'm saying. So McDaniel at halftime, we haven't done anything that hasn't been earned because at halftime we were down ten to seven. Yes. And then the second half. And then Tyree Kill goes back in. And McDaniel says to Tyree Kill, should we throw it right at him right now? Kind of see if he's all right and see if he could do it. And see. And the, the first play was a big chunk play. And it just shows how much of an impact Tyree Kill has on the offense. And how much of an impact the defense has on him. And how they're afraid of him. Um... And then, you know, we all know what happened. I'm not going to go into that. I'm going to have to go into it after this when I break down the film. McDaniel at the end said, this is going to hurt. Let it hurt. This, if this is what it takes to be the very best version of ourselves, so be it. If the game pushes us to be our best, so be it. And I'm hoping and praying to God that this loss, this embarrassing loss on national TV... Because this is the last one. Like, if we win the next two, then that Ravens game, actually, we they have to decide next week. They have to do a two-week in advance if they're going to flex the Dolphins-Ravens game to Sunday night. But this is the last primetime game as of right now. I hope this hurt them. I hope this was a kick to the nuts. I hope this was a slap to the face that you're, you haven't done anything. You haven't earned anything. You haven't done anything. This isn't – you haven't clinched nothing. You have not done anything to be able to coast. You went up 14 points and you gave up 15 in four and a half minutes. You weren't able to get a first down on two offensive drives. I hope this is a slap to the face and I hope this wakes this team up and they play lights out the next three weeks and burns it down. But like I said, this episode sucked. <laughs> Because I had to watch the game again. This time I watched it with my wife. She went to bed when we were up 14, four and a half left. And she was like, oh. And then my mother-in-law texted her and said, tell Doug I'm sorry for the loss. And she was like, what are you talking about? They won. No, we didn't win. But she watched it with me and she was just like, damn, that sucks. And I was like, yeah, I know. I have to relive it over and over again. But that's the job I took on. 
So now I'm going to go break down film for a couple hours, edit it, upload it. That will be out tomorrow morning. And then after that, I will do the power rankings. So other than that, I'll see you tomorrow. And Ma uh, Melvin Ingram has officially been signed to the practice squad. Just throw that in there real quick. Uh, they'll probably get him acclimated with the playbook and then activate him. Maybe he'll play Sunday. And th I'm thinking they do that to move um, AVG to middle linebacker. We'll see. We'll see. I'll keep you updated on everything. But other than that, like usual, I'll see you tomorrow with the film breakdown. But like usual, stay classy. Events up.